them. They sort of stand there, waiting. Uh, Sorry, one spirit, more quick question. Spirit shield in hand. Uh, did that uh, shopkeep ever give me a letter, or did I never get around to that? No, you got the letter. Because I know we talked about it. You, you oh, got so the letter. Gave... You, you picked it up. I remember. All right, good. So what do the what do the guards do? Sorry. They're just standing there. They're just waiting for you guys to come up. Uh, I mean, Gareth, what's the name of the dude we're looking for? Regis. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I just, just go up, like, like as you ride up, I'm just like, good evening in, in Dwarven. It's not evening. It's, it's, it's high noon, first off. It's high noon. And secondly, <laughs> like, this isn't a dwarf, this is a provincial. The provincial? Okay, and I'm just like... So let me, okay, let me just draw it just to give you... Drawing board. And so are we looking for Emmett or for Regis? Oh my gosh, we're always coming back to this map. No, no. We never left the, the mansion. Eamon was yeah. the dwarf who gave me the letter. Oh, okay. I think. And, and Regis is the dwarf we're connected to with the letter. From, yes. Um, so Preston. this is in no way the actual shape of Strego, but just assume it. Like, that's just the space. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just as On this one... is totally the exact size of Strego, right? Yeah, On one like end, feet. the white circle is the provincial externals. On the other end is the way deeper down into the earth. You guys are inside the earth yet. You're still outside here. You guys yeah, are just okay. put onto the provincial side of Strago. Okay, we're riding from right to left. Well, you're not going to you're not going to that you orange box. No, no, but we're riding from right to left. Yes. Okay, gotcha. After you guys pass like a shit ton of checkpoints. Yeah, of course. And yeah. this is the first one. So as you pull up and say, uh, I'm assuming you say good afternoon in common, as opposed to yeah, of course. Like, good evening in Dwarven. Yeah, but like if they're provincial, I'm just like, stop. Yeah, good evening. What's your business? Um, trading? In what? We, um, we come recommended by uh, a noble southward, Preston. We have a letter of introduction. We're here to see Regis. Roll me luck. See if they Regis know is a cog. Regis is a cog in the wheel, my friends. That's how dwarves work. Yeah, it's just like Jim. Can't say I know either of those names. But regardless, she just sort of takes a step aside. As long as you're willing to pay the ta fees and tariffs, go ahead. Of course, how much? I don't know. Whatever the doors are demanding us from these days. Go talk to them about it. Thank you, I guess. Onwards. So yeah, this external Strago town is just some wooden structures. Okay. This isn't Strago itself, though. Yeah. There's a large stone... It sort of looks like a crack in the wall, but you see that's too structured. It's too symmetrical to be just a crack in the wall. And you sort of like this like trapezoid that goes tall. And you're just like, ah, the entrance is Strago. <laughs> Got it. And you can sort of peer, even though it's like, because, you know, being at a bright place, like, into a dark place is, like, hard. That's how our eyes work. You see that inside, though, it is illuminated through assorted torches, lamps, lanterns, and glowing crystals. And it's a very, very large cavern. So, Imposing, but stylish. Indeed. The most dormant architecture is. So yeah, you guys uh, coast through the town. Like the provincial border guards, they don't really like you're you're nobody. <laughs> like you're just more travelers, more merchants, whatever. They don't care. So they don't really pay much mind or attention as you guys go by. Even though you guys do have some peculiar animals and things like that. Yeah. Who's the, the raven and an ox. Well, the ox would be the odd one out, but they don't care. They seem weirder. So yeah, point to straight up proper, and you guys are greeted, but it's something a bit familiar. It's a wall. 
And instead of this is reminiscent of like the uh, the wall that divides the noble district and Tierna. Uh you got architectural style, same across the province. It's a wall, but instead of like a gate in the middle, it does have a gate, but it also has like just large arch. I'm talking about like Parisian archway sort of deal. And then you can see that this archway, this large archway, big enough for hold rooms, has rooms in it. And then these rooms have windows, and you guys have to pass by it. Just to put it simply, it's a checkpoint. Nifty. Where the are there any guards around or people asking? No, yeah, the guards, the guards inside it, and the guards outside. It. The the guards outside it are just sort of like standing there, like at watch, and the guards inside it are just sort of. You guys are the only travelers coming in right now, so. Should we get off the horses? Yeah, I mean, it's not that small. It's large enough to hold, like, for caravans to pass through it. Okay, so yeah. Right up. Is it dwarfs now, or is it still provincial? This is still provincial. Okay. Good evening, gentlemen. There's a sort of, like, a guard. A bit dressed down from, like, the armored attire the ones outside have, but... You could, yeah, they're clerk guards, our deal. And, and she's just sort of just chilling there. <laughs> still nude, that's true, it's still nude. Um, uh, yeah, so she's sort of just chilling there, like, uh, looking over, like, uh, paging through, like, some sort of ledger as you guys pull your wagon up. Hello? What can I do for you? Would like to, um, and she's, go like, in? going on to a new page. How many are your party? Uh, five. And what is your business here? Um, we're here to see um, a man named Regis. We have some trading to do. Trade? Okay. And what would you be trading in? Uh, money for ore. Money trading in ores? Nothing else? Mm, Supplies. Look around. Yeah. Supplies? Of what sort? Food. Medicine as well. Food, medicine, water? Yes. Drinks? So you like recording all this. We're looking to buy, not to sell. She makes like a note off to the side on like a, a separate column. Okay. And under what name would you be putting this under? Magnus. Magnus. Be on your way then. I'll be seeing you on your way out. All thank, right, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what book is she reading? She's not reading a book. She's, she's, she's looking at a ledger. A okay, okay, okay. I, I just thought, okay. <laughs> All right, next checkpoint. Let's go. This is the only checkpoint. Awesome. All Guys, right, we no, solved checkpoint. the checkpoint puzzle. <laughs> well, you had to pass through the checkpoint to get out. Yeah. And you, this, that's when you start paying the tariffs. Gotcha. That makes sense. It's free Morning. to come in. It costs money to get out. Word, word of advice, Chedemir, Uh I say in a hushed voice. Since we had to state our business going in, it would be ill-advised to sort of Snoop. safe keep too many things in a certain storage unit, if you know what I mean. Makes sense. There needs to be at least a show of so things being like there that are supposed to be there. Smuggling something or something, okay. I whispered mm -hmm. to y'all with our earrings, like... You do know our bag is full with iron wood, right? And also we have these earrings. Are they telepath telepathic, Kart? Or do you still have to speak? I think they're... I think it could be either, can't it? You no, it, it's... Speak. Oh, never yeah. mind, that's it up. You can speak really silently. You can whisper into it, yeah. But if anyone's paying attention, they'll think you're talking to yourself, or the more... Criminally minded and capable who have experience with such forms of communication don't know what's up. Yeah. You guys are using tools of the trade. They know the tools of the trade too. 
It's like using a burner phone. Don't use it unless you're willing to risk it. Exactly. So. Also, I, wait. I do give a bardic inspiration to um, Marshall and Chetamir. They only last us? 15 minutes. That is 20 minutes, first of all. And, okay, okay well, then I keep moving shortly before they're actually with the board. Well, you have to tell me when you're giving the inspiration. You can't be yeah, like, I, mean, I will just, just do it. Yeah, no, just tell me, like, when we're actually in the city, because I'm kind of confused at where we are, always. You're in the city now. Mm, are we going to talk to dwarves soon? Yeah, I see dwarves. We then I give a bardic this. inspiration to Chetamir and Marshall. Uh, can I look around the, the, and the see... The town of Strago is not terribly complicated. The town itself is a... Co living in it, shops and the like. That's Strago proper. Both sides, dwarves and provincials, have border guards and checkpoints to get into the town, and then obviously pay to get out. You guys yeah. asked for the provincial side just now. Welcome to the town. That's it. It's more that they're going to try and talk to people to trade, and I want to help them trading. Uh, I would guys. advise waiting until we make contact with um, our, our Regis. named person. Regis. That would probably be a very good point to inspire. Okay. So I, we should wait that by time when we're there. Gotcha. Yeah, so we don't waste them. Okay. Want to make you useful, you know? Uh, okay. Crash, can I look around and see if there is a um, like um, information desk? Because you mentioned bureaucracy. So is there like a person or a building that says, Fair enough. if you're confused, get your ass over here. Uh, it's uh, a map that says you are here. <laughs> uh, you do look around. You do notice that like there are posts which are sort of like large obelisks, like sort of like oh, Washington monuments or a deal with large obelisks with like just giant these like glowing crystals, just a giant chunk of it just chucked on the top. And these seem to be like just sort of this place is a city. It's a town. There's like town information kiosk people. I would point this out, and I would say um, I think we might have some luck if we go over there. Mask. All right. Is it a dwarven person? Roll me your luck. I don't know. Who does this this is, matter? This, like, this is a shared okay. town, so I don't know. It's an elf. Oh, it's fine. No. Add Mira. <laughs> yeah, that's a dwarf. It's just a dwarven dude. Big bushy beard, orange of hair, bold. Sort of just. He looks like oh. a grandpa. <laughs> He's got racist. the hair where it counts in the beard. He does. My grandpa is a redheaded dwarf. Of course he is. is that all redhead dwarves are alike. That's. <laughs> Anyways, though, uh, he's pointing at Connor. He's just sort of smoking a pipe and just sort of reading, like uh, some. Uh... It's, it's like uh, he's reading paper. It's like a newspaper, but it's not like the full like <laughs> like wide newspaper. It's more like a pamphlet. All right, we go up to him, I guess. You guys gotta tell me this stuff. I don't want to assume anything anymore. Uh, yes. Yeah, sure. uh, since it's dwarf, uh, uh, I would uh, Aldric would wait for Cares to do their thing first. Okay, then I will just be like, "Good day, sir, and dwarven." <laughs> Drop that bomb. He looked up. Oh, how are you doing? You were part of the dwarven. What can I do for you? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, we're looking for a man named Regis. We're here to 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 buy something. Last name. I ask in common the other people, what's his last name? <laughs> Marshall, why don't you show them the letter? Marshall is just the wedding. I, I run over and just bring him the letter. He takes it. There's like. And he like sees like the seal of it. Am I allowed to open this? Uh, probably not. Go ahead. Yeah, just I mean, okay, wait. I take it back and I open it first, just in case there's like a nude picture in it. You know, you never know what, what <laughs> picture. Here's the payments. 
payment, sir. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, you open it up and you begin looking it over. It is a letter. Just a simple letter written in what you assume is Preston's hand. And it just... In paraphrase, just a quick... Just to abbreviate it, it's simply... Hello, Regis. Hope you remember me. It's Preston of the Twins down towards Sevlis. Listen, I have a particular commission coming through, and I think they'll be the ones giving this to you. Tall, brash fellow. Very strong looking. Wants me to craft him an axe of, the, of one of the gods. And as a result, as, and his own request, and my own personal professional desire, and desire for further improvements, I want the best damn ore you could provide. According to my clients, money is no cost. That being said, this one, this one, don't screw them over, yeah? Aww. Etiquette. I know you, I know you have a reputation of not liking people and then screw them. But I ask you double consideration to this one. In the end of the day, it is but my own request and it is yours to handle. Truly, Preston of Sevlis, comma, the twins. So he never mentions Regis's last name, does he? Nope. Uh, Shit. I tell him, like, um, he sells ore oh, like to a guy in, in Sevlis. You get, like, the blankest and most unamused stare from the dwarf. Yes, sir. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I mean, I give him the letter, like, I don't know, maybe he can do something he with it. He reads it, and he hands it back. He just sort of leans out the little kiosk window he has, like, through some of its, like, uh, wide gaps in the bar, and he just sort of points off to a direction. Merchant District's that way. Does it say that in common or dwarven? Common. Uh, what about Thank uh, you very temples? The religious district. He points not the same direction, but like a bit off his side. Not not fully perpendicular, but like getting there that way. Thank you very much. Question: Common to tip? You don't tip bureaucrats. Fair you don't enough. tip a person at the DMV. You don't tip your teachers. <laughs> These are all bureaucrats. Please do tip your teachers. <laughs> you should tip your teachers. Yeah, also. You should, but people don't. And not with just, okay, like, so giving them Starbucks gift cards. I mean, in Florida, there's been a rash of too many kids tipping their teachers. <clears throat> okay. Then I would have mentioned before we got in here, like, don't tip anybody. Don't tip your... Dwarves are... They're very stuck in... Tradition? Tradition and order, bureaucracy, hierarchy. They do their jobs because they have to. It's their duty. It's their place. That being said, merchants, the point of merchants is to make money. So, if there's only one cast to tip, it'd be the ones that are, whose jobs are to make money. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I meant, like, don't tip anybody else. Point taken. Thank you for that. Can I take a moment and just sort of listen for the song of the earth? What does it sound like in here? I'm really curious. In here? In here, it's a bit reminiscent of an orchestra. There's a lot of different songs in here. Just sort of echoing and bouncing off the tall cavern wall. That's not to say it's like cacophonous. It doesn't hurt your, you know, hearing or sensing or anything. It's not discordant, but it's definitely not organized. It just seems all just slightly out of step from each other. But it does sound like an orchestra band just sort of playing music, like the beginning bit where they're like oh. warming up. Yeah, something like that. And it's a bit more of an imperialistic music, as you can tell. Fascinating. I will. I would like to show the uh, this bureaucrat person here the letter I was given by Eamon and say, 
I was told I might find some answers among You're your crowd when I show him the letter. It's like sealed. It's a bit more ruffled from the travels. I open the seal first and hand it to him. Uh, roll me your charisma. Not bad. Oh, nice. Above average roll. With a 13. He folds it back up and hands it back to you. Just sort of takes his pipe out of his mouth. He looks you, he looks you up and down. Intriguing as that might be, this ain't the place for it. Wrong mountains. Ah, I see. Thank you, regardless. He not he has like a slight, barely noticeable nod. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that he's not particularly. Yeah. Particularly what? Pleased with what he read. He's not. Okay. Does he look like he's about to rat him out to like the dwarf cops or something? I mean, thank God you haven't broken any laws yet. Eh, fair enough. It's just that he's racist. <laughs> um, on the map, where are Welcome the right life. mountains? Hmm. Could you show us on the map where the right mountains are? I mean, the right mountains. Well, the not so racist dwarfs. I mean, if you don't know where these mountains are staring at the map for so long, I don't. I, I literally can't help you. No, I it's mean, crazy. I know where we are. So it's, it's, it's the southern one, right? Uh, not the southern. The... There are two like options. We know one of them who, is not the right option. Who would like to illuminate the answer? So let me guess, left one is racist, right one is not so racist, got it. Correct. Well, that's funny, since, like, left wing, right wing, yeah, that's funny. Like it. Okay. I did not consider that at all. <laughs> I know, I know, it was just like, you know, just... just... Happenstance. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Okay, cool. A lot of history between these mountains and between humans. Surprise, surprise, the racist ones are next to the... Their human counterpart racist and so forth. And the nicer yeah, ones are next to their human counterpart nice ones. Yeah, That's yeah, how it works. Sense. It's as if culture works like that. Anyways, though. Okay. It's up to you guys. I'm not guiding you here. Here we come. Yeah, let's go, let's go take care of Marshall stuff first. Uh, you guys need to describe to me how you're gonna do shit. You can't. Yeah. Well, okay. We need to do oh, hello, region. No, we go to the we go to the direction he showed us the merchant district in. Yeah, not that hard to follow a single point in direction, especially in a yeah. pretty could, organized town like this. Could we, like, we just see? ask people, hey, do you happen to know Regis? <laughs> you can, and I'll have you roll luck on every single one, and know that the DC is low. As in hard, low. Hmm. Well, Chinomir is doing that. Can I look around and see if there are... Is there, a, is there a, like a structure or a pattern to this district? Is it organized in business types? Um, like... In terms of business types, not necessarily. I had to describe it. It's organized in a practical manner. Because some businesses obviously don't require the same amount of space as others. Things like ores and things and stuff like that. Cause obviously shipping ore ain't no fucking small feat, isn't it? Like areas have like businesses have like set like entire sub complexes, little squared off yards connected to their business itself. So it's built in a manner towards that in the sense that these yarded off buildings and businesses are towards the dwarven side. Or the more, I would say fanciful, but like the more Finish human, <laughs> the more human side of business is towards the human side. So things like gems and stuff, like you're not shipping qu mass quantities of gems. 
Like these are smaller businesses; they're more towards the human side. Yeah, and I think I think there's a. I think where we're most likely to find them is right near the middle, wherever the ore merchants are. There's only so many people that sell ore with the name Regis. So you I think come this up makes to sense. Dwarf. Aldric is like trying to find him like through logic of chamber. He's just like going off. You, logic, you, you, like, come, <laughs> you come up to no, you, there are provincials and um, dwarves in this town, and you figure that okay. you don't want to offend a dwarf, so you go ask a provincial. Fair enough. Fair enough. And you're just like, do you know a dwarf named named Regis? And they just do give you a look, like, ore. and it's like this like woman. And he's like, a Regis. I mean, I know a couple of Regises, and neither of them dealing or ores. I mean. Oh, damn it. Sorry. I'll just go to the uh, first ore funny. merchant. Where where would like the people that tend to deal with ores be? Would you know that? Off towards that direction. You see that larger glowing crystal there? Uh -huh. Go towards that as if it's the North Star. Right under it, hitting towards the Dwarven uh, fence. That's where they are. Cool. Thank you so much. She nods. And Tedemir just goes back and delivers that information. Yep, we go right over there. Uh, right, yeah. right over. And then Aldrich, right. do do the smart thing of actually finding the fucker instead of just asking randomly. I mean, I would ask the first ore merchant to see, like, I, I, I think that is the logical thing. At this yeah. point. Yes. <clears throat> if it's a dwarf, I will ask in dwarven. If it's a human... The ore I'm merchants asking. are all dwarves. Then, let's all ask them, hey, are you Regis, who knows of Preston, and Stavlis? If you ask every single dwarf that, like, you might actually offend them. No, I will ask the first ore merchant if he is that, and if he isn't, if he knows that dude. Okay. So you pull... There's only three large-scale ore merchants out here. Mm -hmm. I'll give you their names, and I don't know, you guys can pick up a fancy sounding name, I don't know. Um, we so we have someone that's named Regis. <laughs> there's uh, the Mountain Star. Mm -hmm. There are the Deep Striders. And then Explority. Ooh, I like Explority. I'll type it up for you. Guys. The backwards Explority. Deep Striders. Everyone okay with exploring? Yep. Sounds uh, funny. Sure. I, uh, however, I start somewhere. Oh. As as we go in, might I suggest that one of us goes in, rather than all of us? And um, if that person could ask if there is a dwarf named Regis on the premises. And if there is, come back, hit us, and then we can all head inside. Okay. Oh, something. Um, oh, do you want to roll this yourself, or do you want to designate? Roll, like, luck? It'd be a luck. It'd be a luck minus 30. Oh, real. Oh, well, that's a 15, then. Nice. That is the affluency of Strego right now. Oh. So basically, oh, what, pro really yeah, what products they would have, what materials they would have for sale. Did they, someone already come in and buy this shit out? Food, drinks and stuff? Well, I don't know. So, so they we got that good it. shit and they're good stock, basically. Or well stocked. Nice. I don't confirm anything. It's a bitch. Anyways, up. Oh. So, uh, who pulls into Explority? Paris, you I... wanted to... Yeah? Yeah, I guess they go in. Yeah, so you come in, and the architecture is built for smaller people. No surprise there. Sort of like yeah, how Bosco... Not... Sort of like how Bosco back at uh, Sindel, like, behind the bar is literally elevated for, so that way he could reach over the bar and stuff. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah. But it's sort the opposite that. direction. It's more like things are built down instead of built up. Yeah. Anyways, though. Uh, so you pull in. You sort of have to like lean down a bit. So it is. 
And there are a number of quirks just sort of L-shaped, like, uh, office area, just right there in the lobby area. And there's, like, four or so dwarves working there. Like, two of them are conversing, like, talk, like tapping paper, like, sort of, like, conversing with the contents on the paper. And then two other dwarves are just sort of doing their own thing. And one of those doing their own thing dwarves is, like, sort of, like, the, the front clerk person. Okay, I go up to him, just, like, um... Uh, Here he is an eyebrow, you yeah, as you like approach. Just one question: Do you say good day? Because they technically don't have a day night cycle. You say hello. Okay, then I say hello. Hello. Um. Look at different. It fucking cool. They responded to um, Warbin. Um, I'm looking uh, to buy some ore. Um, and uh, this like changes his like. Attitude like slightly, like barely, but he just yeah. got like a smile on his face. Well, you come to the right place. What can, what's the order you? We got all sorts. Fresh shimmick just came in. Oh, that's great. Um, I was uh, recommended to ask for uh, a man named Regis. And why would you want Regis, huh? Who are you? Um, I'm curious of the Heartlands. Oh, Heartland Provincial. Another one around, eh? Huh? You don't need no Regis. <laughs> Just tell us what ores you need. And of course, have the coin ready to pay for it. Oh, money is not a problem. Um, that's just... what I like to hear. So, if that's the <laughs> case, then what ore can we provide you? Well, um... Hmm... I can I okay can I inside check if the the moment I mentioned like Regis it's like oof why would you want to go to that dude he's like in a different like a different shop you know yeah like going into the store asking about a different store kind of situation yeah Yeah, roll inside oof oofa doofa party gets fired yourself you can't do that shit (laughs) oofa doofa (laughs) he knows Regis. Same yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Seems to be relatively friendly to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other dwarves heard me, I presume. Uh, the two that are talking are still talking. To you. They don't care about you. Yeah. Uh, the other one but... is like off to the side over there, like turned around the L shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but it's, okay, um... If, just you're wondering, I'm not gonna let you inside check every... The other no, bullshit. no, no, I'm not wondering that, I'm not wondering that. I'm trying to not be as anxious as I am about wanting something. So, this is Aldrich, you know... Per, like, this is what Aldrich's good in. Um... Um... What or am I looking for? I... <laughs> That's the problem. Um, I have a friend who like uh, already put the order in with Regis, so we kind of need to discuss with him. I'm, I'm mainly the the buyer. I'm not the. Um, What's not a buyer the, are you, that you don't know what you purchase? I'm just the middleman. He doesn't seem like he believes you. If you place an order with someone in this establishment, then. You should know the contents of it. Fair, fair. But I don't, so uh, have you seen Regis? You sort of squint to you. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Regis is a busy man, I can't just be given his person that walks in. Fucking, if this guy is, uh, just, I'm gonna flip. That's fair. Um, I just like I'm panicking. I'm just like, where's Aldrich when I need him? Wait, Aldrich can right hear outside. this. He's literally right outside. Yeah, yeah, just chilling out there next to your cart. And we Some have provincials the... walk. It's like only mostly dwarves walk by, and they... what are these tall people doing here? We have to hear pieces. Like Aldrich, please tell me what to tell him. I have no idea you were speaking in dwarven. Fuck. <laughs> I understand all this, so 
I'm just gonna, like, turn over to Aldrich. He's like, they need your help. Uh, uh shit, you don't speak Dwarvish. Tell them to speak common. <laughs> they need your help. Uh, Chetimer, do you mind watching the cart for a sec? Absolutely. I'm totally fine with that. Uh, Marshall with me. Come. <laughs> Bring Marshall <laughs> in. Well, guess I'll Listen, just I'm charismatic. I, I, will, I will tell you that, like, if you think provincials are little, like, stuck-up snitches that go report to the guard, you have not met a dwarf. Any sign of trouble, the cops get called. So don't just don't start shit, because you know no, that's no, that's, yeah. that's not my intention. Extortionism and blackmail and bribery are very much like the antithesis of dwarven ideals. Antithesis. <laughs> okay, then if I if I knew that, I would have also warned them about that. Like, Aldrich, be yourself, but not to that extent. No, this is something that, that this isn't something you as care is like only knows. This is something known about all dwarves. Everyone knows. Okay, good. Cause... Fair, fair. It's, it's like just common knowledge of dwarves. Dwarves are a very orderly society. Like criminal. Look at the Irish. Snitch of the dwarf. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, you come yeah, in and you see her stumbling over their dwarvish. <laughs> it's, a, it's like any honor culture where like. Deception or trickery is seen as dishonorable. Oh. Like, you're less than a person to them. Yeah. That's why uh, dwarves and elves don't get along very well. <laughs> That's why they have humans as a middleman for any diplomacy. Luckily, they have no diplomacy between each other, so they don't have to deal with shit. And in a way, that's why the Marge and Claw dwarves are KO so far natives, or so far like people. Because Sylphal people are not hidden in their racism. They honestly aren't. And the doors are like, ah, you don't like us. And the Sylphal person looks, yeah, I don't like you. Well, that's good. I don't like you either. Good. Look off to the side. I also don't like that fuck over there. Points that enough. Yeah, fuck him. Stupid fucking elves. Lying, cheating. I know. Always lying. Always cheating. Can't trust a single one. Can't trust a single one. <laughs> fuck I don't like guy. you. I don't like you either. You want to go but hang out and not like each other? <laughs> <laughs> that is like a massive quality of why Sofal and Dwarven organization, like uh, government, state, are able to communicate with each other so well. They're very open and blunt in their <laughs> negotiations. All that fancy shit, politics, get that shit out of here. Alright, so I would head inside. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think when Marshall heads inside, like being a little nervous, he like doesn't look down with the doors and just looks like straight forward. <laughs> like military, just like <laughs> I tried to help and I made it so much worse. <laughs> you did. Uh, so yeah, you open the door, ding, ding, like the, the store shop, like door opens, and then like this guy like turns from you, carries off to the new entrance, on taunts. Ah, cares. There you are. I was wondering where you run off to. Uh, have you found Regis yet? We need to give him the letter. Uh, it's common, I say. Um, still, still looking for him. Um, I. Um. Um. <laughs> Listen, I'm not good with words. Um, well, tell me your intent at the very least. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't have an intent. I'm just like, please tell me where Regis is. <laughs> um, this game would be nothing if I just gave you all your shit, right? Yeah, it is, it is right. It is right. Um, so okay, okay. Let me just let me just think for a second. So, um, it comes in. Have you found Regis yet? Um, no, I'm inquiring about it from this uh, gentleman here. Um, just, just give me a minute. Um, oh, is he an acquaintance of Regis? Um, I... This is his establishment, is it not? You seemed pretty convinced earlier. I, I was. Um, I look, like, I look understand. At the, I look yeah. at the dwarf. 
and I look at Karis and I look at the dwarf. This is Regis's establishment, yes? I'm assuming you're the buyer for That would be this guy right here, and I give Marshall a, a little thumb pointer. I am the sponsor. Marshall, you, oh, Marshall and Audrey, you both have to like lean or because you guys are so tall. You're my human standard, so this is like not a super comfortable experience for you. Real life me knows all about it. <laughs> I feel. Hopefully, it. you haven't gone into a hobbit. Oh yeah, I have <laughs> old Scandinavian huts and whatnot. Ah, oh, okay. Well, then you have some experiences. Method acting is all trick right now. Then. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, he he just like looks you you two over and it's all bastards, aren't you? I born that way. Mm. He just sort of looks you up and down. I can tell you that Regis is not on the premises. He'll likely come here within a few hours or so. Ah, oh, thank you. Um, that being said, if we'd like to fulfill any orders, I'd like to know the contents. Marshall? Yeah, go, go over and hand him the note. Still looking like straightforward. <laughs> just like, <laughs> just like, <laughs> and he just like sort of looks at you like he's like really confused. Is your friend okay here? He seems a little. The bathroom's over there. <laughs> he points up to the corner. <laughs> if you need to use it, I might be able to tight squeeze for you, but you look like you need it. Uh, he's just. He might. Yeah. Well, don't don't defecate on our lobby floor. He takes a letter as he says this. He, he looks it over. This letter isn't much better than you guys in terms of to provide. And he hands it back. I guess you he looks at you, Marshall. What was it that you require then? And just like as fast as he can. <laughs> says, yes, I'm much more than to submit this to Marshall. I came here to speak word from from Preston. I'm trying to get the word, and I didn't want to offend you by looking down at you, but I don't know how to act, and I just need to say word. <laughs> And he bows afterwards. <laughs> like, this is kind of the, the fact that you said it so quickly, you should have shouted like. He needs a second to, like, figure out what you said. All the other clerk people, and he's like, like, the like as you bow down, his, like, gaze, like, he's, he looked up at you, and now, like, when you bow, he's like, the, he has to, like, follow and looks down. And you're, like, roughly, like, a, still a bit taller than him, even when bowing, but, like, because he's sitting down, too. But, but, like, it's much closer, and he's just, like, he just. The rest of you see this, like, he blinks a couple of times. I, uh... I think Forgive I him. caught most of that. Uh... Forgive my... He's very straightforward. <laughs> so I see. Marshall, what ore do you need for the axe? We have I... plenty of ore. It's, it's like this guy's, like, trying to, like, console. It's like, there, there, it's okay. He's like, we have plenty of ores. Fresh shipment just came in, sir. If you want, I could grab one of the uh, shipping manifests and a short little catalog impromptu style for you if you wish. Can you just get relaxing a little? That, that, that would be great. I do, I do not speak Dorothy. Or I, I would be sure to conduct it and come. Oh, yes, thank you. Then he just bows again. Okay, you just stay right here. If you have any questions, please direct it towards him. And he points off to the other corksman. Like, that's all. not 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 the duo, but just the one that's by itself. Direct it towards him. I'll be right back. And he, like, just, like turns the uh, little swivel chair, hops off in, means walking. Here's just Chris Markle's muscle, like, you did a good job. He just turns around, thumbs, thumbs up. I think that went well. I mean, it is what could have worse. Like, oh. I don't think I have ever seen you nervous, Marshall. Are you, are you quite all right? Well, I just want to 
make sure this goes all according to plan. <laughs> okay. Might I offer you some advice then, Marshall? Hmm? Uh, what the... would that be? When, you, when you're asking for ore, be calm. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest bit of advice ever. Just chill the fuck out, dude. Just chill out, dude. Also, what kind of ore do you want? Well, I guess that depends on what they had. I had something in mind. I had to see what other had. Okay. Then I'm, I would suggest that you tell him what you had in mind and, th and then look at what they have in stock. When he returns. It'll take him like 10 to 15 minutes to return. So you guys are just sort of be chilling uh, in the lobby. Uh, the dwarven individual that uh, he gestured to earlier, uh, he, did, he does point to like, to like the corners and like uh, sides towards the wall. He's like, uh, if you don't want to keep standing, you know, feel free to have a seat. You don't have to bend Thank down you. too much. It might be a while. We did get a very large shipment in. Much obliged. I take a seat. Ah, yes, thank you. And he just pops down and squat and does like an Indian style sit. The, the, the door doesn't seem to pay us too much mind. He, he's just intrigued by you guys in a weird group that just walked in the front door. So yeah, so you guys are just sort of just be chilling and lounging in the lobby for like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, meanwhile, though... Wait a second. I, I just remember, like, five minutes in, I'm just like, Shit, Chetamir! <laughs> Go out and get her! Well, no, like, before you could do that, uh, Chetamir, uh, you're sort of just chilling with the horses, with shacks, Shaggy and all of them, Keeping and just sort of just chilling cards. out there. <laughs> like, the cart is big by human standards, so it's even more noticeable among the other buildings. That, all, if it's not very obvious, all of these buildings are made of stone. Mm. But that's not to say, despite the like shortened, like the the shortness of the stories themselves, they are multi-storied and they do go pretty tall, uh, rivaling beating out some twins' towns' heights, definitely because the twins are shit. Uh, but as like you're sort of just chilling there, like a cup, like that, only a few provincials are around and just sort of like walk past you, but that way I make any uh, contact with you. Um, and a number of dwarves do so as well, but in a much like larger quantity. And at some point, like a dwarf does come up to you, the sort of uh, female dwarf. You okay there? I'm fine. Why are you asking? Well, it just looks like you're sort of like are waiting to pick up a drunken friend or something. I mean, not drunk, but yeah. We're doing she, like, some business. Looks like she like looks past you and like sort of sees like the the storefront of uh, Explority. Ah, uh, ores. Mm -hmm. What's our ores doing about? Uh, I don't know specifically. I just know my friends try to make a pretty great axe. A great axe? Mm. Oh, don't... You don't need these fuckers! And she's like... like oh, please no. <laughs> casting, like, just casting hand at Explority. We're right there! And she comes, like, she points down the way. I am not the person that handles the business stuff. I am not going to make listen, that Listen, listen, I'm not gonna touch any of this shit, but go get your... This cat. How much of a if you're making if you're making such a great axe, I don't know, fifteen percent for my employee discount. Can you make a then we would be there with the that is a good point. Oh yeah, that's right. Just pop up from back. <laughs> well, do you want to adjust? Just just wait here. And she like that's... she like hops off from inside the cart <laughs> and just begins going. Uh, deeper, or, or over to Explority. I and then she, like, she opens the door and then ding! And then you guys try to see who it is and he's down away. <laughs> she just like opens her mouth to say something and then she stops herself and then she just points at Audrey and it's just like, just like the come here, like hand wave, like, like come, come here. Like, <laughs> I uh, look at the clerk and I say, excuse me for a moment. Oh, take your time, probably gonna be a bit. I, um, Follow, a leap. You stand up from the little stone bench and then, uh, come out. We got like another dwarf. 
offering a discount. I. She just holds a brand. I honestly. Shopping's not my thing. Not for ores, at least. Oh, God. This... Chittermere, I, I get it. Oh, all right. I'll tag along. I'll watch the cart, I suppose. So you come up, and then Chetamir, you and this uh, dwarf, like she's like genuinely inquiring the details of this. I was like, so it's a great axe, a great, great axe, according to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I so like, think he's like long wood blade, head taker's blade with double sided. I think What's the length probably of it? double sided. I'm not sure. He's a big fella, so it's probably long. So probably taller than me is what you're saying. No offense, but yes. <laughs> no, none taken. I, I'm well aware of my shortness. Yeah, I think he's theming it after. Uh, shit, which one's the god? Chedomir, that's enough. Huh? Don't go spilling trade secrets. That's not in your contract. <laughs> I have a contract. That's what you get for not reading the fine print. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna let you do this, and she's just gonna sit at the back. <laughs> Somewhere I know a scoffs. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you must, tall fella, you must be the one she was just talking Alas, I am the sponsor. Ah, the, uh, provider. The sugar daddy. You could say that. <laughs> the sugar daddy. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Justine. Justine Embershield. She shows out the hand way up to you. I take it and I shake it. And, uh, who do I have the pleasure of speaking? Um, Magnus. Magnus? Well, Mr. Magnus. Uh, your friend there informed me you're purchasing orders from this establishment here. Glory. That is indeed correct. Well, I can tell you, I can offer the same ores, if not better. A bit, only a bit better, though. Our miners are all competent down there, but only a bit better, but at a better price down that way. She points down. And you see the storefront for uh, the Mountain Star. Well, that's very kind of you to approach. Um... Well, it's just that it's a bit weird seeing a car just sort of standing out here, and I figured that if these cutthroat bastards and she just are exploding, are making a fool of you in their pricing. It's only right that I sort of spit in their faces and she gestures over for it again and offer you a better deal. Had I not come recommended by the craftsmen themselves, I would have considered your very generous offer. Alas, unfortunately, they were very specific as to who should provide the ore for said project. They asked for uh, Explority. That's some... Um, no offense to your crafter, but... I don't think they know what's right from. I am at the mercy of uh, human craftsmen, what can I say? <sighs> well, if that's the case, what your crafter wants with the worst quality, fine. But when you inevitably have to come back, breaks the crafting, you come find me when we're down at the Mountain Star. Mountain I'll give you some real ore. When they won't break in the process of crafting. I laugh at that and I say, I will definitely remember the Mountain Star. All right. Well then, she holds on. Have a nice then day then, Mister Mac. You as well. It is weird that she mentions day, so you figure she is a dwarf that has. She's a service embarker. She knows what's up, and then she just sort of goes back that direction towards the monster. I sort of squat down or sit down next to Chedomir and I tell her 
if you get more business propositions, just say that you have a pre-existing uh, agreement because it's true. I mean, you fair. can't lie if you're telling the truth. Fair. I think I'm just gonna have Danaway sit up front for a while. Then we get to smirk on her face, but then she like. Also, it goes me. away, and it, like you can see, like she's actually putting it out to establish her strong resting bitch face. <laughs> oh my god, that must be a hell of a stare off. It has to come natural. <laughs> you can't make this. The battle of the who has the better RBF. <laughs> You look at me as if you're pissed at me. I'll look at you as if I'm pissed at you. No one's gonna talk to us. Perfect. <laughs> Gentleman comes up. Hey, have a good minute to hear about the good news. Ooh, never mind. Ooh, never mind. <laughs> she holds up one finger. Fuck off. And then the person walks away. Perfect. Um, while this whole deal is going on, can I ask the dwarf um, that's like handling us while the other one is looking for the ore if. Um, if there's green ore, and if not, which ore would be best to color green? Can you color metals? I mean, you can color any right. metal if you paint it, technically. But... What was your first question? If there's any green ore that you can build a weapon with. Copper that oxidizes becomes green. But then isn't it more fragile? That is a, this is a disgusting green. I want a pretty green. In terms of uh, <clears throat> crafting that coloration of weapon, I can't particularly recommend any or naturally green or is fanciful in particular becoming green. I'm sorry for that. Mm -hmm. That being said, I'm sure there are a number of magical processes apply to any weapon to turn it slightly green. It probably would be not a terribly expensive charge down here. Oh, I, I kind of like, I'm kind of scared at that comment of his, and I'm just, is it allowed to, to do the magical things here? Of course. All right, you're provincial. My bad. Yes, it's okay to do magic here. We don't worship any evil beings. Yet. Is there? Are there magical sellers around here? Aye, there are some uh, commissioner mages around. Here. Do specialty work, consultation, stuff like that. Cover artificers. I look at Aldrich, I'm really excited. And then I once actually. Once I return, you mean? <laughs> yeah, once yeah, he's back inside. I mean, it wouldn't have taken that long to come. Like, well, I don't know when you ask this guy. That's the thing. Like, you come ask him immediately after. Ah, uh, fair, probably. But like, we still have to wait like twenty minutes. So, in the course of the talk, when Aldrich is back. Okay. And then I look excited at Aldrich, and then I actually don't look excited anymore because it's like, kind of want to do magic, kind of don't want to do magic. I kind of want to buy magical shit. Kind of don't want to have anything to do with magic. So it's like... Did I overhear the dwarf saying stuff about magic? Yeah, yeah. You're inside the room already when this conversation. And we're talking common. I would s sit down and I would look at the dwarf and I would put on a like a sort of half embarrassed face expression and I would sort of touch my chin a little bit and I would say, "So, um, this is a bit awkward." But um, I have heard that... I don't like where this conversation's going already. <laughs> Instantly. <know why. laughs> I have heard that there are belts that could help me with my beard situation. Is that true? <laughs> he gets a massive smirk up. <laughs> Go fuck. <laughs> and like the other two, like they resume their conversation. And now like they look back and they're like... Gaffying, laughing, friend. <laughs> oh, oh, you're one of those sorts of people. I oh, there, there are belts like that. Yeah, there's some belts like that. Yeah, not sure. If, 
I, I myself don't personally know anyone that's, that, like, creates those for people like you, but I'm sure there's artificer in town that does. There's gonna be at least one work in the market of those. Oh, that is, that is perfect, because, uh, to be frank with you, this situation I've got going here does not work for me. I, I think you look a bit better. Grew with beard. About, uh, was Mm, you're a provincial tall one, so not too much. It'll, you look like a widow hermit on the mountains. Uh, we'll say like a six and a half inch beard. <laughs> a bit of, maybe a bit, just like two strands of braids on the side. And then they tie together, <laughs> meet each other, and tie off the bottom bit. I think that would look last, good on you. Last beats, just like in. 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 I, I make a very like invested nod, like, oh Yo, yeah, I'm totally buying I want enough to say, like, yeah, I know some philosophy, but, like, not enough for people oh. to think I'm casting spells. <laughs> <laughs> you need the glasses and the flannel. Yes. Amazing. I love this place. We're never leaving! <laughs> yeah, no, the belt of Dwarven Kind, despite it being a very good item, is an actual item in this world that's, like, a tourist commodity for rich people. Of course I want it! it. Well, think about okay, it. Happy, like, think, think happy. about it. You like it gives you better resistance to getting drunk, and it gives you a fucking beard. Yeah. And most people don't notice a difference of constitution. They're not a player character. They don't fight. Go out and fight shit. Yeah, they're just like you can drink better. So after the ore, we're definitely looking for the artificer shop. I will say though that in in this the bo the belt of dwarven kind gives you dark vision in the DMG. It doesn't do that. Because dwarves don't have the dark vision in this campaign. Fair. Noted. Still, I have 2,000 gold I would like to spend. And uh, magical items I'd like to sell. So, great place. Great place, 10 out of 10. Oh, no, you guys are lucky roll, oh, oh, rolled well. Yeah. Thanks, oh. You're the man. Thank you, oh. If not, okay. just...